Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing, presented by the Demani Group. My name is Andrew Lowe. I'm a senior industrial designer. I've been using SolidWorks for almost 15 years now. Do rough surfaces have you on edge? Got a kink in your spline? Zen out and come to really understand how SolidWorks surfacing works. Using advanced techniques, I'll demonstrate surface modeling workflows that allow you to quickly and easily create the most challenging of shapes. Located just outside Chicago, Illinois, the Demonic Group is a full-service product development consultancy offering industrial design, design engineering, electrical engineering, and software development services. In this next installment of Zen and the Art of Solidworks Surfacing, we'll continue looking at solid sculpting, a technique we can use to create our models with solid features, and then add additional visual detail and interest with surface features. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the techniques I use to create the angled rear surface of this electronics enclosure housing. So ultimately, we'll be creating this shape, and instead of relying on just cuts and the fillet tool to create this shape, we'll be actually using surface features, which will give us a higher quality ultimate finished product. So let's take a look at how I went about creating these features. So here is the shape before we started any additional detailing with surface features. And the very first thing I'm going to be doing is adding a fillet to this back edge here. This is a curvature continuous fillet instead of the standard circular option set at 30 millimeters. The next thing I'm doing is creating a plane that will determine the height of the uh, angles surface and where that ends. What I can next do is start a sketch on the surface and we'll be actually be creating our surface features between the sketch here. The way I generated this was using the intersection option at the sketch. So we'll just pick this command here, intersection curve, and pick the three faces. And now we get a new sketch entities where our sketch plane intersected the faces. Our next sketch is converted from the layout sketches we looked at in the previous video, and we'll be generating our surface features between them. One thing that's nice to do is you can make these converted sketches a little bit longer by simply picking the ends and dragging them longer. We want to make sure that our cutting surfaces uh, penetrate fully through the part, so dragging them a little bit longer helps achieve that goal. Finally, we have a layout sketch of what our angled face will look like. And instead of just creating a straight line between this vertice and this vertice, we've added a little bit of visual interest in the form of this style spline. And this little kick up here will just help this whole transition look a little bit more sophisticated rather than just having a straight line between them. So now we can go about actually creating the surfaces that will be used to sculpt this feature. And the first surface we'll use is a surface extrude. So we're simply extruding up to a point on our layout sketch to make sure that it's long enough. Ultimately, we'll be building a new boundary surface between this uh, blend or this fillet here and the sketch G3 entity on a sketch on this top face here. But a surface extrude works perfectly for creating the first portion here shown in green. We're actually going to make this body transparent so that way it's a little bit easier to see what we're looking at as we're creating our sculpting surfaces. On the other side, we'll be using a, another surface extrude. This one's a lot shorter here and this generates the angled face on this portion of the shape. Finally what we need to do is create the transition between them. So instead of just relying on a fillet and the intersection between here, we're going to be trimming away the extra material and creating a new transition surface between these two surface extrudes with the boundary surface tool. So what I'm doing is creating a sketch that will trim back this first surface and a second sketch that will trim back the second surface. And what we're actually doing here is creating just straight lines between corresponding vertices on our transitions. So we have a uh, edge here generated by that fillet and we have a sketched spline here. So we want to join these together and we'll be creating our boundary surface between them, creating one seamless uh, area on the rear of the part that forms the angled face. We need to do the same thing on the other surface. So we're creating a, another sketch here between the two vertices, joining everything together and trimming back. And we now have a portion uh, identified for our transition surface. And now it's just simply a matter of using the boundary surface tool 
to connect the profiles. So in direction one, we have a sketch profile here. And in direction two, we have a second sketch profile here. Note that these are much longer than uh, actual needed. So instead of just having the, the entity here between these two profiles in direction two, we have the entire length. And so we're turning on trim by direction one and trim by direction two. And what this is gonna do is only build the surface between the profiles that we need. In direction two, we are using the curvature to face option, and we've had to increase the tangent influence slider to 100% to get the correct look. On the second profile in direction two, we have the other surface edge, and now it's just a matter of building the surface. We need to now knit these surfaces together using the surface knit command. And finally, we're using the surface cut to remove the extra material from the model, forming the final sculpted face of the rear of this shape changing our transparency back to fully opaque and hiding our surface. Let's just take a look to see how this looks. So we have a really nice high quality transition between this face here and this face here. And that a little bit of kick we added to our sketch just provides that little bit of visual interest that further punches up our character line. We can see between the sculpted front face and the sculpted rear face, we've now really emphasized this top planar face that really gives like a nice clean look and helps define the shape of this part. So to recap, we'll be using surface features to sculpt away portions of the model that we don't need, creating the angled rear faces of this part. We're starting out by creating profiles that we can use for surface extrude features. Here we're adding a style spline to add a little bit of kick towards the character line. This will help provide us a nice little highlight that will further emphasize that character line. Our main surface is constructed of two surface extrudes with a boundary surface between them. We need to trim away the extra material and build transition curves between them such that our boundary surface can use these as profiles. And we're shaping the blend by using the curvature to face option on both of the end profiles in direction two. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this installment of Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing. Be sure to check out the example SolidWorks files on the Demani Group website linked in the description below. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Happy SolidWorks Surfacing.